congressional and state legislatures. But the local government districting is also referred to both of their districting process. The city of Santa Ana was the local process that was in 2018 to ensure that the city council board and all the officers are rebalanced by the signal as Another thing to keep in mind when bringing working population, redistricting also serves to empower the local community and preserve voting rights. The purpose of having this redistricting process is about making sure that there's representation and bring voting out of the order. Next slide, I guess. The goals of the community workshops are one, to conduct the community outreach hearing so that the public can provide input to help identify the needs, prevention, funding options, and that information will be presented with the recommended map format. And again, I want to remind you to ask the public to answer any questions, especially if they have questions to be provided. Traditional um, redistricting principles. These are the principles that the council consider when drafting and finalizing the final map. There are also a number of criteria that have been used nationally and from up to the board. The first one is creating boards of relatively equal size. What we're talking about is we're talking about citizens, not citizens, using the census data. Contiguous means that the board can not talk or jump in the area or neighborhood. We're going to ensure that all boards are in touch with one another. They're intact. Maintaining communities of interest is a concept that will be more in depth during this presentation. And this is crucial criteria to do that they're not enough. Another thing that the council can look to is at the other local governments, for example, if we have to work with school district governments or recreation or other ones that exist. Different areas that you can think about. 
these are a wide variety of things that people can come forward and give testimonies on your public comments. Communities of interest could include neighborhoods, renters versus homeowners, school districts, recreational areas, cultural amenities, etc. So these are all listed items that you can look at on the slide. Now that we've introduced the definition, what of a community of interest group is, we want to go over and what is not a community of interest under the Fair Map Act. And the council is explicitly prohibited from considering these following groups as community of interest. They cannot consider political party affiliation, which is, and then a good example of this is those who give testimony solely based on their political party affiliation. So if they come in and say that they're a Republican or Democrat, Green Party, Independent, et cetera. The council is not allowed to use that testimony as consideration in community of interest input. Incumbents, similarly to political party affiliation, which an incumbent, if you don't know, means that a council member that are considering to run again. So somebody who's currently seated and they wanna run again in, the, in, the, uh, in that seat. And then political candidates is another thing that um, they cannot consider. And a good example is they come into the meeting and they say, I live in this area. I really want wards to remain in the state because I plan to run for council. That is not a testimony that the council can use to consider in the community of interest input. We recognize that you have every right as a member of the public to come and share your testimony but it is up to the council to determine what things are allowable in order for them to do their redistricting process for their wards without violating the fair map Act. In addition to that, it is difficult to consider groups of similarly minded people who do not share a similarly geographic location or are citywide. These are questions that, you can, that can help you answer defining your community. The first question is, does your community have a shared culture characteristic or bond? A lot of us think of ourselves as being part of an ethnic group, but beyond being Latino and Asian, what are other characteristics that tie our community together? Do we go shop together at the same place, go to a specific park, go to a specific church together? The second question is, is the community geographic in nature? Is the community able to be mapped? Visual maps are the most preferred as we're unable to visualize written or verbal testimonies without a visualized map or geography. So we recommend, excuse me, we recommend that you include street boundary, neighborhood name, or a specific location in such that we do not want to misinterpret your preferred map or boundary. And the third question is the testimony consideration is, describe your community's relationship with the jurisdiction and how it is affected by the policy decisions made by the elected officials. What this means is to consider what is your community's relationship with the city of Santa Ana Council? What are the regulations or their laws that affect your community? These are the three things that's going to help you evaluate and determine your public testimony or your public comment. Is this a community of interest? So what I'm gonna do now is ask you a few questions and if you feel like you know the answer, please nod your head, um, yes or no, or you can um, speak up. So there's a group of renters who live downtown and they testify to the city council. Do you think that this is a community of interest? Next slide, please. If the member of the public nodded or agreed to the statement, then you are correct. This is a group of residents that can easily be mapped in a distinct area and they share common policy interests, which can be addressed through legislation or public services. Next slide, please. Is this a community of interest? 
a historic neighborhood or business centered area or an area that's been refused a loan to someone because they live in an area that seems to be in a poor financial risk or a racial group not allowed to purchase or lease properties by city council's consideration when drawing maps. Do you think that this required that this would be considered a community of interest group? Yes, historical communities and areas with historic discrimination can and should be recognized as a community of interest when drawing maps. A group of dog owners living in the suburbs banded together to push their local elected officials to put in a dog water fountain in the dog park. Would, the city, would their city council consider this as a community of interest? Yes, this is a group of people in a shared geographic location who have similar needs for public service. A statewide group for people who are fans of San Francisco Giants testified to the city council. Is this a community of interest? No. It is important that a community of interest is distinct enough to draw on a map. This group overlaps throughout the entire state and it's unlikely that a governing agency has any say over these issues. If we were to think about this example in another way, we could imagine a baseball league specific to the city of Santa Ana. It could be considered a community of interest only if it applied to our city. So now we're gonna go over, um, since we went over the activity to help you identify what your community of interest groups are, we wanna kind of go over the forms that we did provide to you today. And this is also available on the website. There are many ways to submit your interest form. So if you're present today and you want to complete this interest form while you're here or submit a comment, please make sure that you have us receive this. If for some reason you feel like you wanna hold on to it, um, please allow us to take a picture of it so that we can keep it for our record. We wanna make sure that we're able to get back with you and follow up with you. Map submissions. We also provided um, two types of expected input. You can uh, submit a personalized map. One is the uh, community of interest map and, and district or ward map plan. The community of interest map can outline your specific community or neighborhood or any area you think should be kept whole. The ward map can be drawn based off of the upcoming 2020 census data, which outlines the entire city. These maps can be either full or partial maps and may also be submitted online. We also have a tool, a mapping tool, with, which redistricting partners will be going over on how to utilize. Um, and that, the name of the website is called District R, or I've been saying District R, as it flows easier for me. And this is the link that you can go to. It's also provided on our website. Next slide, please. There are, all, there are also paper uh, maps that the public can use to draw their own community of interest. And this is an example of a community mapping tool that you have, and it's a very large sheet of paper. We did that so you can see the uh, different parts of the city as best as we could bring that to, to you on paper. So if you decide to complete one today and you want to keep your map, as some people may like to do that, please allow me or a staff member to take a picture of your map before you leave so we can have a consultant review what you've considered as part of your community and also the city council. This next slide um, is all of the workshops that we had scheduled. But if you attend, um, I'm sorry, this is all of our um, outreach meetings. So one thing to note on this is that if for some reason you feel that one of these meetings you can't attend or you know a resident or a community group 
that would like to participate, you think it would be helpful for me to be there, please, I encourage you to let me or my staff know we will reach out to them and we will make sure that we make ourselves available to you. We want to be here for you. We want to help you as much as we can, but I need to know that you need that. So please communicate to me or my staff and we can schedule additional meetings. It is not limited to this. This is just a way of you knowing that we're gonna show up in every ward at least one location because they, these locations made themselves available to us. But if you have a location for us that you would like us to be at, we will be there. We'll just have to schedule some time. Next slide, please. There are also upcoming city council meetings. On October 5th, this last um, Tuesday, we had our meeting. There was a lot of time sensitive items and council action items that delayed our October 5th meeting and it adjourned our first um, public hearing to October 19th. So on October 19th at 7 p.m., that will be our first public hearing. On November 2nd, 16th, and December 7th, the reason why I have it in red here is because that may very well be rescheduled. And that is going to be brought to the city council on October 19th so that the city council can inform us if whether or not those dates will work. One of the things I will let you know that we are considering just so the public knows is we may have special meetings scheduled just so that it doesn't compete with any city council time sensitive action item. Next slide, please. If you find that you can't participate or a member of the public that you know that wants to participate, they can join us by Zoom and there's a link there available or they can call us by phone and then they enter in that meeting ID number. It's a very simple process. Um, and you don't have to do anything but put in your name and it may ask an email address if you go by Zoom. Um, but I wanna make sure you know that all of the workshop meetings and the city council meetings will have that information is exactly for all of the meetings. So please share that. And then any information that we update will always be on this website. So we encourage you to visit it frequently and that is wwwsanta anna forward slash redistricting. And with that, I want to hand this over to Liz with Redistricting Partners. If you want to share your screen, she's going to show you how to use the mapping tool. And once we're, we're done with that, then I will take in any questions that you may have. Great, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, let me actually go back. So this is Districtor. Um, this is how you can draw your coin maps and- Hold on one second, Liz. We can't see your screen. You can't see the screen? Mm. No. Okay. Um, let me try sharing it again. Stop share. Do you see it now? No, we don't. No, we don't here. Hold on one second, Liz. Yeah, no worries. No. I am trying to close our Okay, now can you see it? Now you have to. Yeah, and then when you go there and go to view. Sorry, one second. Go to view and do full screen. No. Go to view. Full screen. Okay. okay, now we can see it. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Great. So um, to get to Districtor, you can go to districtor.org slash tag slash Santa underscore Anna. And here you're going to find the um, Districtor page specifically made for the city of Santa Ana. 
Um, so this is using the most updated um, and current uh, data from the statewide database. So this is these are the numbers that we are basing the um, city uh, redistricting numbers off of. So everything's up to date here. Um, you will have two options when you're drawing maps. You can draw a COI, so community of interest based map, or you can draw the six different wards um, for the city uh, in a way that you think is the best um, for you. Um, so let's go ahead and draw the citywide um, redistricting uh, option first here you'll see you have different options for moving around the map and drawing. So this hand will move the map. Um, so if you need to adjust, use that one. And you could zoom in either using your mouse or these two buttons here. This will allow you to draw. So this brush right here, the second button, this is how you draw your different wards. And you can change it by size as well. So if you want to draw a whole bunch of census blocks at the same time, you can do that. Or you can draw one at a time and get very specific. And then if you want to erase, uh, you can do the same thing. So hit the erase button and you can do one at a time or a whole bunch at the same time, just like the brush. So. And then if you wanted to look at who is in the specific blocks, you can just hover over it with this magnifying glass and it'll tell you, it'll give you a breakdown of the demographics. And then if you noticed right here, um, each block or each, um, let me go back to the brush, each ward, will be represents is represented here so um, you can draw one ward or all of them so let me go ahead and show you how to draw another one and you'll notice right here it is accounting for the population so it tells you you want to get to the ideal number it tells you what that number is it's fifty one thousand, and then It'll tell you how much you've drawn right here. And then the great thing is it'll, it'll also tell you the deviation size. And remember, we want to keep it to 10% or lower. Um, so you can see that it's at 7.56 right now. Um, and then you just keep doing so for the rest of the city. Um, however, you do have the option to draw as few as you want and up to six. So if you decide that you just want to draw one city council or, or one ward, um, you are more than welcome to do that. And then once you're happy, uh, or first, let me just go over the different data layers too, because that might be helpful for you. So you can look at the demographic breakdown as well. And then citizen voting age population is just what we use um, to assess uh, voting rights act um, section two analyses. Um, so that's why we include that as well. But you can see the breakdown of your different um, wards as well. Total population. So that's what that data layer is. And then once you're happy with how that all looks, you can go to uh, save and you can share it using this um, URL or you can share it directly to the gallery. And the gallery is, um, it's what we use to see um, people's submitted testimony. So that'll go directly to us if you hit save. So it's super simple doing that and ensures that everyone sees it. Um, let me go back. So here is the public gallery. You can see some folks have already submitted some um, maps, which is great. Um, and then let's do a quick koi map as well. Um, here we go. 
So with the koi testimony, you don't have to worry about the size of the population. It's really about um, you and your community and defining it. Um, remember, we want to know where the boundaries are for your community. Um, so we uh, don't accidentally cut through it. So you can draw these are the same. Just look. so the hand is the same. The um, brush, eraser, and magnifying glass. So we're just going to draw a koi real fast. And then we're going to name the community and then describe it. So one, uh, remember during the presentation, you had a few questions to think about. So what makes the community unique? Um, what sets it apart from the surrounding areas? And then how is it impacted by city council? Um, that's what I would suggest when you describe your community. And you can draw multiple koi's as well. So here's community two. And then again, you can name it and then describe it down here. And then you can also add important places. So if there is a center, um, often parks are a good place for, um, well, is a center for communities as well. Um, you can make note of it and describe why it's important to your community. Um, and you can do multiple of them as well. Just like you can with the uh, communities of interest. And then once you're happy with that, you just hit save like last time and then share to the gallery. So that, that's the difference between the two koi and district maps. Um, one is about your community, and then the other one is about how you think the uh, city council should be um, divided up. So with that, I'm happy to take questions uh, or kick it back to Daisy. I remember the three questions that were really the critical questions that you were asking you to help us identify is, does your community have a shared culture? characteristic or bond? Is your community geographic in nature? Is, it, is your community able to be mapped? And does your community's relationship with the jurisdiction and how it's affected by the policy decisions made by the elected officials? So those are the three main things we wanna make sure we capture. And with that, if anybody has any questions, no, nothing. So Norma is going to provide a microphone so that you can speak into. Everything that is occurring right now is being recorded and it's gonna be available on the city's website. You can always go back to it. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, am, I be able, am I able to go? Are you able to hear me? Yes, we're all able to hear you, yeah. Okay, so I think um, for just working with the television community. And you know what, Norma, can you raise the volume on the microphone? Just to, just to make sure. So uh, some of the residents here are from the Sullivan community. And again, the Sullivan community is actually not identified in the neighborhood, uh, the city of Santana's neighborhood uh, map. And I think we are trying to understand and see how we can possibly uh, be inclusive of the community because it's a community that's separated with two wards at the moment. And I think it's a community that shared, you know, the culture. They, most of the community is privatized. So it's, it, it's, it falls into some of the questions that you were asking right now, Daisy, because I think for us, it's really trying to bring this, this sense of shared culture together, right? And not have, it, not have it be separated because I think that's something that has affected the overall outcome of why there hasn't been much communication or participation from the residents. And I think for us, it's how can we be more inclusive as a city, as a community, as a family to be out there and engaging our residents because as, again, they're the ones who are being affected um, by all these different um, issues at, at the moment. Unfortunately, uh, many have been uh, undergoing due to you know, specific needs in regards to housing. 
but also how can we get them more engaged and meet on opportunities like whenever there's food, how can we make sure the word is you know shared with them? Because I think that's also been an issue. The accessibility to information. How can we go out there to the community and, and fly it? And I think understanding the different, you know, um, privatized, you know, regulations that maybe the property owner may have, how can we also work with them? And it's about working together to that serve the community. So I think for me, it's how can we include the Sullivan community and how they become one versus two. Right, and, and the, the very important thing about what you said is why is it important that we reach out to them, right? And what can we do? I mean, we are here because this was offered to us in locations, but if you have a way in, if you are a person that we can utilize to help us connect with that community, I want to take advantage of that because you're absolutely right. Every voice is important to be heard, especially when they identify communities, just like you said that they're two different boards, but they should be really kept in, in, as one. We need to understand why. What is the bringing you, what's the bond that's bringing you together, that, that characteristic? That is so important because that has to be mapped out on, on, the, on the map. So thank you so much for your comments. Uh, did you have anything that adds this? Nope, that sounds good. I just highly recommend that he fills out a Koi map as well. Um, so we know what the boundaries are and that's um, in you know official record and testimony. That's definitely something we wanna know. Perfect, thank you. Ah, buenos días, mi nombre es Cetra Medina de la Organización Sullivan en Acción. Buenos días. Y vivo, y vivo en un parque mobile home llamado Country Club. And he lives home park. Entonces, la, eh, la inquietud mía, cuando, se, cuando hablamos de la redistribución del distrito, when we talk about the el concilio aspira a a que nosotros le hagamos llegar, llevar, llegar a ellos nuestro interés o nuestras aspiraciones. O el Concilio aspira que nosotros estemos las aspiraciones de ustedes. And that we get your aspirations. Cuando dice la distribución, un ajuste del lindero significa de que no se pueden cambiar los linderos, o sea, los límites de, de, de las calles. So this means that we cannot change the boundaries. In the district. No se puede cambiar eso porque en la resolución de distrito de distritos eh, que es en base al último censo de 2012. It, it was based on the last census of 2012. Yeah, en la que en el mapa se ven que hay distritos más grandes que otros. And in the map it looks bigger than the other one. Y lo que la gente no sabe y lo que la gente no sabe es por qué esa diferencia en, en las áreas por qué esa redistribución y si esa distribución contó con la aspiración los intereses de la gente porque siendo así nosotros si sí quisiéramos una reforma a la una reforma no re, o redistribución de los distritos tratando de que nuestro distrito tenga un área que avance para la calle Mapado. So they're trying to get the, their district to be in the area of Mapado. No hasta la Willis, porque no es una comunidad tan interesante. Sí. Not until Willis. Um, they, they have their own area. No, perdón, perdón. Perdón, queremos... Ah, estoy equivocado, perdón, perdón. Nuestra, nuestro distrito empieza en la Willis Sí, por el norte. Sí. Y quisiéramos es que en este ajuste de, de linderos ya pertenecer al distrito 1 que sería que sería que la Willy se cambiase el distrito 1 de Gaza hasta la calle Marfa. En otras palabras, yo soy sincero, la franqueza no viene. Queremos pertenecer al distrito 
que es liderado por el concejal Jonathan Hernández. Eso es todo. Concejal Jonathan Hernández. No, porque él es el concejal de distrito 1 y el nuestro es Silva Serra. Entonces queremos pertenecer al distrito del concejal Jonathan Hernández. Eso es político. Y la política es el arte de esperar algo. Y eso es lo que esperamos. Gracias. So I encourage you. I encourage you to please complete the map so we can see those boundaries that you just identified. Thank you so much for your comments. Norma, the other microphone. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Laura Calderón. I'm Laura Calderón. Yes. Mm, me gustaría que por favor uh, tuviéramos un poco más de vigilancia uh, en el área de la Sullivan porque es muy difícil lo que uno vive ahí debido a tanta like to have more, um, uh, security on Sullivan y seguridad. Uh, siempre nos están rompiendo los vidrios Because de los, de los casos, things. nos roban cosas. Things, things, so y la verdad, incluso hay accidentes tan fuertes que ahí he perdido mi carro y fue pérdida total. Uh, so bad, y uh, hemos even had my hemos gastado car. demasiado dinero por esa situación, We dinero que a veces no tenemos. Es muy difícil la inseguridad en que vivimos. Really hay drogadicción, really hay pues muchas cosas que yo podría comentar, There pero many, many en many sí me gustaría que por favor hubiera más vigilancia. La verdad no tenemos apoyo like con la policía, porque si les haya mano, muchas veces no ha ido, okay. otras veces llega, pero, pero ya demasiado tarde, y pues es el pan de cada día en esa zona. Y la verdad ya estamos cansados. Y yo he oído comentarios de personas que han dicho que, bueno, o algunos reportan, a veces no reportan, por la razón de que pues si, si, si reportan, pues tendrían que meter la aseguranza y se ocurre la aseguranza. Y otras veces, pues la meten por lo mismo que es tan grande el daño que causando, que también tienen que meterla. El día de ayer, a mí me le volvieron a destrozar el carro por dentro, se rompió en el vidrio. Y pues ese dinero que que mi hija no the tiene, más sin embargo tiene que mandar a su carro porque con él va y trabaja y tiene que hacer sus cosas. Yeah, o sea, no es un lujo, es una necesidad de tener un carro o las cosas que tenemos. Windows. Que le comentaba que en sí, pues lo que tenemos no son lujos, sino son necesidades las que tenemos. Trabajamos muy duro para poder tener este, ahora sí lo que necesitamos. Y como le digo, me gustaría que nos ayudaran. No nada más nosotros somos a los afectados, hay mucha gente que es afectada. Unos hablan, otros no, otros nada más entre nosotros pues, se quejan y hasta ahí quedan. Okay. Pero sí es muy difícil. It's really hard on the area. They had things stolen, cars stolen, and breaking into, uh, windows broken. It's hard to get the insurance. And it's a very bad area, and they would like more security or police help or something. It's really hard to live in this area, and they would like, it, they would like some help. Muchas gracias por su atención. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comment. Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es Andrea Chamu. Good morning. My name is Andrea Chamu. Y la verdad sí es preocupante. Yo vivo también en una casa móvil. It's very, en, uh, it's very worrisome. I live on a mobile home park as well. En, este, en Conroya. En Conroya. En Conroya. 
eh, y la verdad sí hay mucho vandalismo, necesitamos más seguridad. We need more security, there's a lot of vandalism around. Y eso es, este, casi pasa todas la, las noches porque uh, yo vivo uh, a un lado, o sea, pegado de la Sullivan. And it's almost every night. I live right on Sullivan. Y la verdad sí, aparte de que se oyen que rompen los vidrios, desacalan los carros, porque incluso a mí, mi carro le han quitado como varias piezas y yo tengo que reemplazarlo. And it's really bad, even though they break windows and they break into cars and they steal our car parts. Y and sí, la verdad me gustaría que hubiera más alumbrado, más seguridad, y aún así cuando uno le llama a la policía, la verdad la policía a veces no hace caso. I would like to be more light, lighting in the streets, and even though we call the police, they don't come or they come late. Porque incluso yo he llamado dos, tres veces y casi dicen yo he llamado y volvido a llamar al mismo tiempo y qué pasa me quedo esperando solo ignorar y dice si es emergencia entonces si es vida y muerte o okay, qué vamos y si no tienen que esperar. So when we call the, the police, they say, is this an emergency? Is it a uh, life or death emergency? And if it's not, they don't show up. Y la verdad sí es muy preocupante porque hay mucho grafitero en la barda que, y mucha basura que dejan los mismos personas que hacen grafitis y me tiran la basura para el lado de mi casa. And that, it's very worrisome. Um, they have vandalism in on the Um, she lives on the side of the street on Sullivan and they even throw the trash over the, the wall to her house, to her property. Y incluso una señora apenas ayer me estaba, ayer antes no recuerdo cuántos días tiene, pero me estaba comentando es una señora como de 65 años. And there was a lady, a neighbor, she's about 65 years old since she was telling me que iba este que estaba una persona ahí orinándose de parte de no era no era la noche era en el día en a daytime there was a person urinating right there y que ella le dijo que eso no estaba bien que se fuera a otro lado and right? she told him to go away that's not right to do in there entonces la, la, lo que yo voy es más seguridad que haya y también adentro en el parque que de vez en cuando la policía eche su puerta porque es peligroso la verdad. And we like more security in there, daytime and nighttime. It's very dangerous and they would like some police action. Muchas gracias. Buenas tardes a todos los representantes de la ciudad, gracias por venir. Y yo soy Rosa Pizano, una líder comunitaria de, de la ciudad de Sul, eh, Santana y aquí de la calle Sullivan. Uh, estamos uh, yo en el Country Club. Permiso. Good afternoon, I'm Rosa Pizano, I'm part of the Sullivan community. We live right here in the mobile home. And uh, I'm a community leader. Adelante. Siga. Uh, sinceramente, todos estos problemas que hemos tenido nosotros, el vandalismo, robo, graffiti, crimen, han muerto más de unos 10 muchachos aquí en esta calle. And uh, yo le... All of these problems that we have, vandalism, graffiti and broken into, and at least 10 young people have died. Uh, yo he venido peleándolo siempre con todas las juntas, pero desgraciadamente no hemos tenido un buen representante uh, que nos apoye. We haven't had any representation from the district, from the council, even though we come to the meetings and we've uh, Uh, entonces estoy pidiendo por favor que este joven concejal, este Hernández, ¿verdad? Que nos toca, es, que es. se quede ahí con nosotros para tener ya más comunicación con él. So más we, would like, we would like Council Member Hernández to be 
in our district to be our leader so we can have more communication with him. Y, y pues uh, otra cosa que nos uh, preocupa es que esos landlords que vienen desde Utah, ellos han privatizado nuestro lugar donde nosotros vivimos. And one mm -hmm. thing, these people who have come on our uh, mobile home park, they have privatized our place. Y entonces nosotros lo que queremos es de que nos quiten la privatización, porque la tierra pertenece a Santana, no a Utah. Él no tiene por qué poner privado el lugar. A veces no puede entrar la policía, no puede entrar la, los bomberos de, de emergencia, porque el día está cerrado. And we would like them, uh, they come from Utah, we would like them to take away the privatization. And so our police and our uh, firefighters can come in. They cannot even come into our park for an emergency. Sí, y estamos también pidiéndole a este landlord que nos abra una, una puerta extra porque parece un callejón sin salida. Cuando hay accidentes graves en la Sullivan, no nos dejan entrar, ni entrar ni salir, porque no tenemos una entrada sobre Williams. And we will, we will also like to have an emergency exit or another exit because when there's an accident on Sullivan, we cannot even come in or out of our own park. We need another exit. Y, y si yo toda la vida he pedido seguridad, más luz, cámaras, y no sé por qué no nos han podido ayudar. Y todas las calles de aquí abajo tienen cámaras y solamente nosotros no. ¿Por qué? Porque nuestro concejal, no hemos tenido un buen concejal, la verdad. And we've always requested cameras, more lightning on the streets. There's no cameras in our park, but I've noticed there's cameras everywhere else. And we ask why, because we don't have the right council member to help us. Muchas gracias. Thank you. So uh, I think I just, Nomas, um, just to clarify, I think uh, the residents right now, they're trying to also uh, understand, right? Because from Willits to McFadden, the representative is uh, Phil Bacera. And then from Willits to First, the representative is Jonathan Hernandez. So it's really hard and difficult for them to engage two, res two, two representatives when the community is, is you know, common and, it's, and it has the same factors that identify each other. You know, again, the area is privatized. So how can we work with one? And how can we work with the city? So not only the city, but also the school district. And at the center of the community, there's a school, you know, and we want to be able to also like utilize the school to be, you know, having more community engagement. So how can we, in this redistribution of the districts, how can we work together also with the school district? Um, I'm not sure what policies may prohibit that, but, I think it's even, you know, worthwhile to engage in that process as well, because I think it's about working again, you know, to best serve the community members to truly and really engage them. Because I know the school district, they launched their FACE initiative, and the FACE initiative is to prioritize uh, community engagement. So how can we work together with the school? Because it's been an issue for us to um, get, get a hold of the school because they have uh, a, a process called Facilitron, and where you have to pay money to a, Unfortunately, a lot of our community members, they don't have that money to be reserving these spaces, right? So how can we be making sure that we are inclusive and taking into consideration the different um, factors that, that make more welcoming and more accessible and more um, inclusive community um, services and programs for, for, for the best interest of the community? So I think that's the only um, question that I would have working with the school. That's actually really pertinent and excellent question. And I want to connect with you as soon as this meeting is done, okay? Because there's something on the side, aside from redistricting that I can connect with you on that. Thank you so much. Is there any other questions or comments that you would like us to um, capture at this time? If not, um, I encourage you to please complete those maps. I think that the more you have saying the same thing about those boundaries, the stronger the statement. So if I really encourage you to get as many as you can in to us so that we can see what the community is, is mostly concerned about. 
Absolutely, yes. I encourage you to. And it's also available on the website. Uh, Norma, where's your there's so, so please help turn it off. Okay, hay una manera de hay una manera de, de cambiar los linderos o ya no se puede hacer nada. Decir, podríamos, podríamos ser parte del distrito 1 de tal forma que Willy no sea nuestro límite, sino que sea la calle más falta. We could remander our district so our border is not really necessary. What do we need to do? Liz, did you want to touch on that process? It was a little difficult for me to hear the question. Can you repeat it again? So the question was uh, if they, what is the process for them to be considered as a community of interest? So, um, because they want to understand if they feel that there's a particular area that's a mobile park area um, that should be connected with another um, with another area, and right now it's divided. Okay. And they want to understand what is the process in in helping them understand whether or not that's going to be considered. Yeah. We're drawing the the map boundaries. So. Our role as a demographer is to follow the law, right? So the Voting Rights Act and Fair Maps Act, and to listen to the community. Under the Fair Maps Act, um, it's required that we, uh, you know, as much as feasibly possible to maintain communities of interest. So more so than ever, we're looking at maintaining communities of interest um, with the Fair Maps Act. Uh, so when you submit your testimony, either verbally or hopefully on districter, um, or if you draw it on the map, if, since you're in person, that should be um, relatively um, simple. Um, we're going to look at that. We have to look at that. It's required of us to, um, and we want to and make sure that we're not, um, you know, diluting your voice as a community. Um, so you do have that power to go to your elected official, um, to go to the ballot box. Um, so that should hopefully, um, you know, this new law should hopefully strengthen your voice as a community. So I highly, highly recommend that you do fill out a COI um, form, um, a map, so we know exactly what communities you think um, are connected and should not be divided. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. We look at every single piece of testimony when we're drawing the maps. Um, so the sooner you get your maps in, um, the more impactful it will be in the process. Does that, it, does that help? Queremos que se convierta en una comunidad de interés porque normalmente... Déjame señora Bueno, si la figura legal es convertirnos en comunidad de interés, queremos eso, convertirnos en comunidad de interés. Si es el adjetivo apropiado, en eso nos convertiremos en comunidad de interés porque queremos... If we would like, if we want to be a community of interest, then that's what we want to be, a community of interest. Queremos que la Willis no sea nuestra división, que no sea la calle que nos divide, que no sea la frontera, no sea el interés. Mm -hmm. So we want Willis not to be our, our boundary. We don't want that boundary to be Willis. Queremos que la comunidad una empiece en la Fairview, corriendo de norte a sur, y la más fácil en corriendo de este a oeste hasta la Bristol Fairview. So we want Fairview to be a boundary from north to south, and McFadden from east to west. Porque económicamente nosotros Todos los centros de compra y todos los centros de aprovechamiento están sobre la calle Mafalda y no sobre la calle Willy. La Willy no es ni peatonal ni vehicular. On our shopping centers, 
are on Fairview, not on Willis. We don't have anything on Willis. Educativamente, nuestro sector va a la Lincoln. Pero la mayoría de tenemos escuela también la Monte Vista, que está en el sector nuestro. We have Lincoln School in our district, but also Monte Vista should be in our district. Quizá nuestra área aumente un poquito en metros cuadrados, pero creo que poblacionalmente no se afecta demasiado. Si son 51 mil habitantes lo que ustedes han decidido para componer los distritos. Um, for the people in the district by square feet, should be 51,000. I think we can meet the 51,000 residents in the district. Esas son las razones que yo alego para que la Willy no, no divida, sino que desaparezca y nuestro límite sea la calle eh, Mapane y ser todo distrito uno. Creo que me hago entender. I think I make myself clear. Gracias. We don't want Willis to be our boundary. We want McFadden to be our boundary so we can have all district one together. So what I encourage you to do is to please draw that out on your map. And, and we can help you do that here before you leave. <laughs> we, we want you to, I don't want to interpret or misinterpret what your, your boundaries are. So I want you to draw it out on the map so we know for sure. Any other questions that we can answer? Okay, thank you so much for being here. I think this will conclude our workshop and now we will go ahead and go into the process of helping you complete your math if you need it. There's tables, help yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, Norma, someone at the end has a question. Espera un momento, le voy a pasar. Pasar el micrófono. Okay. Okay. Eh, yo tengo una pregunta y una preocupación. Eh, nosotros pertenecemos a la comunidad Sullivan. Espera un momento. Ok, ahí me escuchan. Okay, mi nombre es Priscila Medina, pertenezco a la comunidad Sullivan en Acción. Priscila Medina, from uh, Sullivan in Action. Ah, específicamente en el Mobile Home Country Club. Ah, como todos sabemos, este es un Mobile Home privado. Entonces, muchas veces no tenemos, por ser privado, el acceso a ciertos servicios que de pronto la ciudad no nos puede dar, como en otros, en otros barrios. It's a very difficult time right now in our community. As you know, we don't have security and access to emergency services. Entonces, específicamente tenemos un problema con la basura. And right now we have problems with the trash collection. Entonces, al ser eh, una, un móvil home privado, se espera o se supone que deben de darnos estas facilidades de, en cuanto a la recolección de basura. And as being a private place, uh, Pero, supposedly we need to get our garbage or um, removed, picked up. Pero estamos limitados a cada cierto tiempo a que la, el manager nos facilite o traiga containers de basura. Es un container inmenso, grande. We're very limited by our landlord that he brings those big containers once in a while. Entonces creo que lo hace dos o tres veces al año. O sea, no es muy seguido este servicio que nos presta. So this service that he provides is once or twice a year. Y cuando lo hace, eso se rebosa hasta arriba y no entra más. Es un, antes lo hace dos días, ahora lo hace uno. And when he does, the trash gets all the way up. It's very, uh, very complicated. And now it's just once that he does it. Entonces muchas veces las personas tienen mucha recolección de basura porque arreglaron sus casas o tienen mobiliario que, que botar, etc. Y tienen que pagar uno de nuestro bolsillo para ir a botarlo a otro lugar. And so we have needs that people have to throw away a lot of garbage at once. And 
So we have to pay from our own money to go distribute, throw it away some, somewhere else. Entonces quería saber si el consejo tiene acceso a darnos ese tipo de servicios, porque en otros lugares los he visto que los tiene a la mano. So we have to, no lo tenemos. we'd like to see if the council members can help us with the service, if the council chambers, are, um, because I hear other communities have it. Y así como otros servicios que necesitamos, pero como somos privados, no hay ese acceso. Entonces, esa es la pregunta. ¿Cuál es el alcance de nosotros de poder tener estos servicios, ya que somos una comunidad privada? So, as our community, we want to see what we can do to get the same services as other communities, because our place is private, so no services get to our place. So, we want to see how can we reach other services from the community. Eso es todo, gracias. That's all, thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, so, después podemos hablar. Um, no sé si podemos ayudar, pero allí podemos comunicar con gente que trabaja en la ciudad. Y ojalá que sí puedo darle información para que, allí para hablar, a ver si pueden, que pueden hacer la ciudad. Um, so, otra pregunta? Any other question? Um, no, no. Bueno, otra de mis preguntas es que en donde yo vivo, yo vivo en High Lali, es este condominios, pero cuando compramos ahí nos prometieron dos parking y, y resulta que a la mera hora cuando nosotros entramos al, al condominio que compramos, los de la asociación nos quitaron un parking, que porque supuestamente es ese reglamento y que no tienen suficientes eh, estacionamientos para toda la comunidad. Entonces, perdón. I live in a community and uh, it's condominiums. So when we first moved in, they told us we would get two parking spaces, but now we only have one parking space because they're saying that there's uh, uh, problems with the parking situation. Y pues nosotros nos quitaban un parking y nosotros batallamos mucho porque a veces llegamos muy tarde y ya no encontramos estacionamiento cerca en la en la Sullivan. So sometimes we have problems because we work late and as we only have one parking spot, it's very difficult for us to find a parking spot late at night on Sullivan. Y ellos los de la asociación siento yo que si sí hay suficiente parking, pero ellos hacen negocios con los parking, porque después van, a mí me han dicho, oh, ¿quieres que te rente un parking extra? Pero ¿por qué voy a pagar por un parking si tengo derecho a dos y tú me lo estás rentando? And then, from the situation, they're uh, making a profit because they offer me to rent a space for my a parking spot. And I say, why do I have to pay for something that's already in my contract? In, I have the right to two parking spots. Y pues sí me gustaría que nos apoyaran porque muchos se han desesperado y mejor se han movido de ahí por no pelear con los de la asociación. Ellos siempre nos están cobrando cada mes lo que nos cobran, pero ellos no cumplen con lo que tiene que ser. Como tenemos seguridad y la seguridad da cuenta que no tenemos nada adentro de los parking. And we'd like some help with this. Uh, we have many different problems with the association, things that they promise but they never uh, do. And for example, security, we don't have security in the area and they promise security and it's very dangerous inside. Pues es un poquito difícil y me gustaría en verdad que nos apoyaran porque uno con mucho trabajo realizó la compra de ese condominio para tener una mejor vida y pues de ninguna forma estamos bien. And we'd really like some help because uh, with this situation, because we don't have the, the needed help and the, the promised thing and we need more help with our situation, yes. Thank you, gracias. Okay, si no hay otra pregunta, comentario.
if there's no other comments or questions, um, we will go ahead and end our workshop and would encourage you to please complete your, um, com your interest form um, survey or the map or both. Thank you so much. Thank you, Liz, for joining us today. Um, I will go ahead and disconnect this.